Hello, my name is John Rose, and in this video, I'd like to explain why there is so much confusion that surrounds nutrition. Why can't we seem to agree on what diet is best? What's wrong with our species? I've mentioned this before in other videos. Everything in our society of any significance has everything to do with our health or more specifically our lack of health and that means that everything related to health has to be controlled by the status quo to make sure the status quo remains the status quo. Uh, I find this topic very interesting to me because the very first book that woke me up to really what's going on in the field of nutrition is a book by Pavel Areola called Are You Confused? and this book was based on the International Society for Research uh, on Nutrition and the Diseases of Civilization. Key word there, diseases of civilization. And this was founded by Dr. Albert Schweitzer, and I mentioned Albert Schweitzer recently in one of my recent videos on finding happiness in your purpose in life. And this organization was made up of hundreds of, of uh, researchers and scientists uh, from 75 different countries. And they came up with seven rules. And rule number one is eat only natural foods. Number two, eat only whole foods. Eat, number three, eat only living foods. Number four, eat only poison-free foods. Number five, eat a high-carbohydrate, low-animal protein diet. Number six, systematic under-eating. And seven, correct eating habits. Now, before I go into those, I would like to mention that when you look at a lot of books, let's say like, like uh, the China study, for example, they talk about how we're confused 47 times. You look at Joel Furman's book, Eat to Live, he mentions it 18 times. So it's well understood there's a lot of confusion in this area. I don't have to, I'm not really telling you anything we don't know, but these seven guidelines are really interesting. Uh, we look at the first one, eat only natural foods. Well, the only foods that are natural are foods that are grown on fertile soil. And of course that doesn't happen anymore. Most of our foods are grown on artificial fertilizers and sprayed with pesticides. And Dr. Max Gerson pointed out that when we grow our foods on artificial fertilizers that it creates a sodium potassium imbalance and that all chronic disease begins with a loss of potassium on an intracellular level. Dr. Gerson also pointed out because of the foods being grown this way that they were seeing more and more children being born with leukemia and cancer. Why are little, little children having diseases that were only associated with old age? It has everything to do with our food. So our food has to be grown on fertile soil. soil. Soil fertility is the key to everything and this explains why a lot of people don't do well on eating our natural diet. Now rule number two, eat only whole foods. Again this is a whole plant-based diet. We don't want to process foods. The fourth thing we mastered in machines is a big mistake when we start processing our food. Most of the nutrition is on the outside of food so when we strip that away we ruin, uh, we lose most of the, the valuable nutrients. Rule number three has to do with eating only living foods. And I'm going to take out my tape recorder and I'm going to fast forward to a section. I hope I can find it right. I think this will be it here. Listen to this. Dr. Robert Bell hit the nail on the head when he said, Man is the only creature upon this earth who spoils his food before he eats it. Man's slow degeneration to the present inferno of diseases started with the discovery of fire. Since then, man seems to have been using his creative imagination and unlimited inventiveness for devising newer and newer means of ruining the nutritional value of his food. Rule number four. So, so I think that's a great quote by, by Robert Bell. Uh, and then number four, uh, we want to eat uh, only foods that are poison free. So look at all the garbage they put in our foods now, all the chemicals, the artificial flavorings, the artificial colorings, the preservatives. Um, we want foods to be uh, free of what I say is the fifth thing we mastered, chemicals, and it's a big mistake when we started adding chemicals to our food. <clears throat> Sienna, hang on a second, my dog is getting trapped inside my bike. Come over here, baby. Okay. Uh, so where was I? That was number five. Number six is we, uh, or number five is we want to eat a 
high carbohydrate, low animal protein diet. Well, the reason for that is obvious. We don't have the anatomy to eat animals. We shouldn't be eating any animals at all. And this low carbohydrate diet craze is ridiculous. Uh, you know, the low fat diet craze wasn't successful because people didn't understand nutrition well enough. Again, too much confusion. They thought, well, if it's low fat, I can just eat as much as I want. Well, that's not true. We have a very small carbohydrate fuel tank, and two things can happen when we have a small carbohydrate fuel tank. Number one is we can overfill it. Excess turns to fat. So if you're eating 5,000 calories, it doesn't matter if there's no fat in it at all. You're going to be eating a lot more carbohydrates than you need, and all that excess is going to be turned to fat, or at least 70% of it. It takes about 30% of the energy to convert it to fat. I'm watching my dog wander off. See how to get back here. I might have to go chase her down in a second. Um, in fact, I might have to do that right now. Let me come over here and see if I can keep a better eye on her. Sienna! She can't even hear me. I'm going to have to walk that way and, and steer her back the other way. So, again, we don't have the anatomy to, to eat animal products. And... The low-fat diet wasn't successful because people didn't understand that the concept behind low-fat when it comes to losing weight is you got to eat less calories. In fact, there's a direct relationship between how, many, how much fat we can eat uh, and how much weight we can lose safely uh, d depending upon how much, we, how much weight we want to lose. The, the more weight we want to lose uh, and, the less and the less calories we eat, the, more, the less fat we can eat to protect our lean body mass because, again, we have a very small carbohydrate fuel tank. Sienna, come on, baby. My poor little girl was over-vaccinated when I rescued her and developed diabetes six years ago. And um, she's losing her hearing and vision. It's sad because she, is, well, she knows what, what it means to come and stay, and now she can't even hear me. So, number five, quit eating those animals. Number six, systematic under-eating and periodic fasting. Calorie restriction is one of the is about the only thing they've ever proven scientifically that extends the life of every creature they've ever tested this on. So what we want to do is eat a nutrient dense diet. Now I remember the now stay over here, baby. They did a, a biodome experiment a while back where they put these scientists in this biodome and they they had them in there for two years to see how well they'd do. And when they first went in there, they miscalculated how much food they could grow. And one of the people in there was Dr. Roy Wolford. He said, don't worry, I've been doing research on calorie restriction my entire career. And I know that as long as we eat nutrient-dense foods, we don't have to eat as many calories as, we, as, we, as, as everyone else. And of course, their concern was, oh my God, we messed up and we can't grow as much food as we thought. And again, Roy Wolford said, don't worry about it, we can manage. And what I found fascinating about this experience is that is that they had a, an observation window where people could come and look in there to see what they were doing and everybody that looked inside and looked at these people said oh they look too thin and yet when all these scientists came out and they're all in their 50s when they all came out they all had biomarkers of teenagers and they said that everyone else thought we looked too thin but it's funny on our side of the window we looked out at them and all of them looked a little overweight so it depends on what side of the window you're looking at so Systematic under-eating is very important. Periodic fasting is also very important, uh, especially since we live in such a toxic world. Even if you're eating perfectly, you need to periodically cleanse your body. And that has everything to do with the very first of my three-step process. I believe this is the best preparation for a better way of life. But then once you do it, once you go for uh, the appropriate length of time based on your individual condition, then you need to do this periodically. Once a year, twice a year, uh, many people will, will fast uh, in the spring and in the fall uh, at, at time of the equinoxes. Um, and it, it's something I do at least usually once a year. Uh, I usually do it for 30 days and I do it mainly to remind myself it's more fun than eating and you think that after doing this for 1200 days in the last 24 years I would know that by now but I love eating like everyone else and I've got to remind myself yes it feels better than eating nothing feels better than having an empty food tube it's indescribable I can't find words to describe it so periodic fasting very very important and the last rule they went into was correct eating habits. Here they went into it, the importance of chewing your food uh, and correct uh, and food combining. And there are a lot of different theories on food combining and the only one that makes any sense to me is the one that's based on bowel transit time. And I did a video just last night on bowel transit time. 
And the concept here is you want to rate your foods uh, relative to rabbits and turtles. And the key here is you don't put the turtles in before the rabbits, otherwise you create a traffic jam. Now I've analyzed everything I've eaten for 30 years, and I know that if I eat the rabbits or the, the turtles before the rabbits, things don't come out of me at the right time. And the last thing we want is too much junk in our trunk. When we have too much unlimited waste matter in our body, that pollutes our system. This is why Victor Hugo called this garbage inside of our system a serpent that lives within us. Why did he say that? Because our intestines are shaped like a snake or a serpent, which is equated to evil. And remember, the word evil is the way the ancients long time ago, a long time ago, a couple thousand years ago, people tried to warn people about living the right way and not living the right way. And the opposite of live or live is evil. You see, that was their way of trying to tell people why we have so many problems, why we have this dark side to our behavior. So it's very important to periodically cleanse your body. Click here and you can go to a seminar I uploaded that tells you how to do a solid food vacation. And I've coached thousands of people, so I have a lot of professional experience. And I've done this personally over 1,200 days and documented every bit of it. I can go back and look at my 15th juice fast or juice feast or my 51st one or my 102nd one and tell you exactly what happened on day two, day 10, day 12, if I went that long. I, I can tell you exactly what went in and what came out. So I have an understanding on this that very few people have on this planet. And there's a reason for that. I'm very passionate about helping people. I'm very aware that we are all one. I understood this before I bumped up my biophotons and felt it. It just was a no-brainer to me. It only made sense that, that if everyone around me was going to be happy, aren't I going to be happy too? As a young, young man, as a teenager, I'd go out of my way to, to do something very simple to make someone else happy. It's such a simple thing to do, and it's a sad reality that not enough of us understand that. And we shouldn't have to think about it, and we wouldn't if we weren't killing our food because when we cook our food we destroy a very important nutrient known as a biophoton that feeds our sixth sense. This is why we struggle so much. We don't feel one with everyone. We don't feel the connection. We don't feel other people's pain. It's very difficult to walk in other people's shoes when you don't feel connected to them. So uh, I know I harp on this a lot. I go over it and over it and over it in just about every video because I never know if this is the first video you've ever seen of mine or if it's the 60th video or whatever. And I'm sure those of y'all who have watched a lot of my videos know that it's important to pile drive this information because the people who need to hear this message the most are the ones who might need to hear it five or six or seven times. And it's not about thinking about it intellectually as much as it, is, as it is feeling it. So what we have to do to really get a grasp on all of this is to do something we've never done before. And that is correct five main mistakes on a permanent basis. Now, I've mentioned this before, there are three ways to correct these five main mistakes. And two of these ways most people aren't willing to do. One of those ways is to eat a raw vegan diet. You can start that approach, and a lot of people are successful doing that. And if you can do it, great, that's all you need to do. The other way is to do a water fast, but remember, I've mentioned this many times, our body has too many environmental toxins in it, and our body needs ATP and glutathione to neutralize and eliminate these toxins, and you don't get those on a water fast. So when you do a water fast, when the first phase of this two-phase process kicks in, we convert the fat-soluble toxins into water-soluble toxins and it can become dangerous. Think of it this way, this two-phase process our liver goes through to neutralize and eliminate these toxins. The first phase is like gathering up all the garbage in your house and putting it in a, in a plastic bag and then putting it out there on the, uh, on the street to have the garbage men come by and pick it up. 
Now, the, the garbage bin would be the glutathione and the ATP. Well, what if you don't have that? Then what you have instead are a bunch of thugs that come out and they kick the bags open and the bags spill all over the place and they do damage. So we store toxins inside fat cells for a reason, to protect the rest of the body. And when we convert those fat-soluble toxins into water-soluble toxins, now they can do more damage. So that's why fasting can be dangerous for a lot of us and why we now have to prepare for what used to be considered the best preparation for a better way of life. So three ways to correct five mistakes. One's a raw vegan diet. Two is water fasting. Most people are unwilling and able to do that to get enough people's attention to wake up the masses. But the juice fast is something that I know enough people are willing to do because it's already been done. Bill Bright won a million dollar award back in 1996 called the Temple Award. He wanted to get a million Christians to do a 40-day juice fast like Jesus fasted on water for 40 days. Within one year, he had 14 million people doing this. This has been done before and we can do it again, but I need your help. So, do your job on the hero's journey and share this information. If you're in the first stage of the hero's journey where you have the ears to hear this message, but you haven't accepted the mission yet, you haven't tested an idea as time has come yet, click here and go to my seminar and do the first of my three-step process. Remember, Victor Hugo said we have a serpent that lives within us. He also said there's one thing stronger than all the armies in the world, and that's an idea whose time has come. That idea is to get rid of the serpent and bump up those biophotons and get reconnected and do your role, do your job as the true guardians on this planet by being the best that you can be and sharing this message. Once again, if you haven't done a solid food vacation yet, click here, go to my seminar, and I can guarantee you, when you do this, you are in for a treat.